Hi guys, in today's video I am going to demonstrate a, a vulnerability known as proxy logon or proxy shell and this is the recent vulnerability which is discovered in Microsoft Exchange and this is a new attack surface. So I will be showing you how to identify this vulnerabilities on a live systems as well as how to mitigate this vulnerability. So before we uh, go and try to uh, address all of these things, let's try to understand the context of this vulnerability. This vulnerability discovered by the name called Orange. And this is the person who discovered this vulnerability. And this vulnerability has a couple of, you know, uh, you can see the uh, consist or the chain of the vulnerability, uh, which allows to execute. The one which I'm going to show you that is PowerShell SSRF, Server Site Request Forgery attacks so it will allow you to identify the vulnerable servers those uh, based on the http response so here is the blog post from this guy range who who explained these things that uh, how he discovered this vulnerability and uh, how this vulnerability can be exploited if it is not passed however the microsoft has released the patch to uh, you know address this uh, vulnerability but before Identifying this vulnerability, let's try to understand why this actually exists. As you know, the Microsoft has released a couple of, uh, you know, Exchange versions, 2000 to 2003, 2010, 2013, and 2016 and 19. So they each uh, has its own attack surface and different roles and different features are added in these, uh, you know, Microsoft Exchanges. So in order to have the compatibility, they have to you know, rely on a something called HTTP and they are using the cookies to rely on and there are a couple of other parameters those getting you know you came to know once I will go through all of these things so here is the architecture for CAS this is the one which is responsible for and you can say the receiving the inbound connections from the mobile devices web and outlook and directly once it's received that it is forwarded this request to the backend services so here is uh, you can see the all the authentications on uh, happens and this is known as the cas server and behind the scene you have the mailbox or mx servers which you call it so these guys you know uh, identify each components that what are there so cas servers has a two ias server one is for front end one is for back end as you can see right now I am giving you the high level overview. I don't want to deep dive into it. If you would like to uh, you know, know more about this information, so you can go through with this art ticket. So the one is responsible for authentication part. You can say once the authentication happens, then this the CAS server is responsible to communicate with the backend ones. The CAS server, which is known as the front end service and the back end service mail exchange. So it has different modules. You can see here the different modules name has been classified. FBA is the module which will be we will be focusing, and what this module does and how the vulnerability can be exploited by using this. So there is a one module or the you can say class. In this class, we have the three sections. One is the request sections, proxy section, and response sections. Each has its own job job to do. So one is rewriting the header, one is looking for the you know, cookies, one is adding uh, another contextual header. So this kind of information so you can read about this and proxy sections, how they are making the header because HTTP is a stateless protocol. So you have to add this information so that the backend services can identify and can respond to it. So this kind of, uh, you know, uh, information which is given here in this blog post, one thing I would like to highlight, once the user is authenticated, so you have the authorization scheme and as well as X common access key, which is responsible for actually, uh, which is generated based on the NAT5, sorry, uh, Kerberos tickets. And these Kerberos tickets uh, are sent to the backend server. And the backend servers see the response and validate using this module called the hydration module. There are a lot of things to cover, but uh, I will be focusing to SSRF vulnerability, which is here, which is authentication bypass. You don't need to have the authentication. You just can identify all of this vulnerability just using the NMAP script, 
which I will show you that uh, you, where you can find this script and what is this script is going to do. So you can read more information about this article because it's a quite huge article. I cannot articulate each and every part so which is there, but we have a pretty awesome information because uh, as the time of recording, we have only two, two blog posts from this guy and uh, we are expecting two more where we will be getting you know part three and part four some more other informations as well as you can find here the slides so i have already downloaded these slides so you can see the very various parts for example these three type of uh, vulnerabilities or attacks you can say proxy logon proxy oracle proxy cell we will be focusing on the proxy cell and how to identify ssrf using this because uh, proxy cell consists of two vulnerabilities because that is the chain of the vulnerability. So let's jump into the Kali machine. I try to identify uh, the vulnerable servers. Those are vulnerable for this attack. All right, uh, so before we jump into the Kali machines, I would like to uh, show you that uh, I will be using this NMAP NSE script which is developed by Kevin and this is uh, his uh, uh, you know, GitHub account and this script is going to test a couple of things they are going to test the auto discover you know uh, this is the features and using this if they receive the response an HTTP header 302 status then this they can identify that uh, this is one level for uh, proxy cell SSRF if they receive the status 400, so it means this is not vulnerable for SSR. This is the way without authenticating to validate whether the cell server is vulnerable for, for this uh, vulnerability. So I will be using this script. I can share this uh, link with you and you guys can also validate your exchange server whether it's vulnerable or not. So this is no exploitation. It's, you can say just validating or identifying. The vulnerability so, uh, in order to identify this vulnerability you will copy that nmap script and uh, put it into this this location which is user share and map and scripts here in this locations you don't need to worry about uh, too much because the script i explained you that is pretty simple it's uh, just checking and validating the http status based on this url which they are using if the HTTP status says 302, it means it's vulnerable. If it says 200, so sorry, 400, it says that it is not vulnerable for SSR. If it's not any exploit, so we are just uh, trying to gather information about the vulnerable, uh, vulnerable exchange servers. So how to identify the vulnerable exchange server? In this case, uh, I have already created a video regarding this recurrence using this soda. If you haven't checked this video, please try to uh, check my in, uh, my YouTube channel. If it is not available, I will be posting in the into the descriptions. You can find it from there because uh, I would like to avoid uh, those steps which I have already uh, you know uploaded in my channel. So here are the some of the servers which I will be using to to validate whether this uh, so these servers are available for. Uh, this vulnerability. So I have just I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Unfortunately, it's not going to copy. So I will be typing this. There is the first server, which is okay. This is 443. This is the main server, name of the server. And this is my script, which I copied from here. You can see from this is the same script which we are testing using the HTTP and map and validating these two responses 302 and 400 if the response is 302 we can say it's vulnerable so here you can find that it says that a change uh, is uh, it's not highlighting anything maybe this is not the right exchange so i will be using another command which will be and map hyphen p Sorry, port number and specifying the port number is 443 and the mail dot uh, that's so sack. Let's validate this. 
yeah you can see that uh, right now our nmap is, is can identify that this server is vulnerable for ssrf and proxy cell vulnerability so this is not the patch server let's validate another one which is nmap hyphen p p for port number 443 we are validating and which is uh, let me identify the another one which is mail dot if you are worried about what how i didn't how i got these servers just check out my sodon one then you can you came to know that how you can use sodon to identify these uh, mail exchange servers so this is also vulnerable server let's validate the server which is not vulnerable so in that case i will be using nmap hyphen p for 43 port number and uh, the name of the server is mail dot this server is not vulnerable so it means our script is working properly because the response from this server is uh, not 302 it is 400 so this server is patched and these servers are vulnerable for ssrf so this is the easy way to identify uh, getting the information in information gathering phase and don't use this uh, informations for uh, legal purposes this is just for information reading to identify so whether the server is vulnerable or not if it is then try to go ahead and pass this because microsoft already has released this patches uh, for 2019 2013 and 2016 so don't leave your exchange for the hackers just try to patch all of these so that's it in this video hope you enjoy this we'll catch you in next video thanks for watching